What's going on YouTube? Why Kanye the Great here with your weekly TWAB update from Bungie. All right, this is a big one, guys. So we're going to jump right in. Uh, we're just going to be going over the matchmaking, guys, because that is the uh, biggest takeaway from this TWAB. Uh, I definitely want to hear from you in the comment section if you like these new changes or not. But let's go ahead and jump in. And before we do, go ahead and hit the like button, sub button, and join button. And of course, let's get started. So, uh, just so you guys know, the raid, uh, the new raid, the, re the redacted raid, is going to be live at 10 a.m. Uh, August 26. But you guys are here for the matchmaking. So, starting in Season 18, we will be introducing some changes in how we play Matchmaker in Crucible. This will be the first iteration that is part of a larger plan going through Season 19. Our world system teams are leading the charge on this transition and are here to go with a big info dump on what to expect. Let's talk about skill and connection. We know this has been discussed with a lot of passion and goodwill in many places in the community and inside Bungie. So we are going to give you a clear TLDR before we get deeper into how and why. We're striving towards a goal that all players, including new lights, oh my, that's a big word right there, uh, can enter the Crucible and regularly get matches where they can feel competitive and have reasonable chance of winning and competing. That's awesome, I'm, I'm all for that. Making fair matches using skill-based matchmaking, SWMM, is going to be important to help meet that goal. We are starting by implementing loss SBMM to control playlist at the start of season 18. Loose SBMM has a wider starting skill similarity than survival and should result in matching with a wider variety of players while also eliminating some of the frustrations we see in our current system. Expect loose SBMM to expand to other playlists in the future seasons as we tune what we consider high quality match by gathering real data and feedback from you. We are not planning to add it to every match made Crucible playlist. We will continue tuning until we are in a good place. We will report tuning updates regularly. We will be implementing a form of fire team size preferred matchmaking in season 19. Oh my. A lot of what follows is pretty in-depth. Feel free to skip to the tuning section below if you aren't interested in the details and just want a high-level view of what you will be experiencing. Goals of creating high-quality matches. We developed some goals which we will be working on over the next few seasons. All players, including new lights, oh, oh my, can enter the Crucible and regularly get matches where they can feel competitive. All players, whether solo or with a fire team, can find a place in the Crucible where they can play a variety of matches and have a reasonable chance of winning and competing. We are defining reasonable as expected win rate between 40 and 60%, which is fantastic because there was a, uh, a while there where me and the crew, we would be running it with like a 9% chance of winning or like sometimes even less than 1% chance of winning. So if we could go up to 40 to 60, I'd love it. For most matches, keyword most, players are rewarded based on their skill and proud of their skill. Reserve a place for players who do not want to engage in skill system. Generally speaking, any matchmaking in a competitive multiplayer game tries to put together high quality matches. We consider three things when assembling a high quality match. Connection and quality. There are two types of connections that are important. Connection to the game server, connection to all other players in the match. Generally, bad connections to other players have a larger effect in Crucible than connection to the game servers. So when we talk about connection quality in Crucible, we are talking about that connection from player to player. Lower quality matches result in jerking off movements. Oh, that's not what that said. By other players. Oh my. Miss shots or getting unexpectedly damaged or killed. We have a lot of that going on. Uh, when fire teams are spread across the globe, we have a lot of that going on too. We pick a single player's latency to speed up finding matches. Oh my, I wonder who that is. I hope it's me. Uh, match fairness. Ideally, all players in the match have a reasonable chance to win that match, i.e. have similar skill. Matchmaking speed. We always consider matchmaking speed 
as a key element. No one wants to wait 10 minutes between matches, no matter how perfect they end up being. I don't know. I'd wait like five to eight minutes, truthfully. When matchmaking, we must balance these three elements if we want to lower matchmaking speed. We are either going to need matches that are less fair or matches with lower connection quality. We'll continue tuning to find the best balance possible. Skill. Throughout this TWAB, we will be using the term skill in Destiny. That term refers to how we rate all players who participate in PvP on a scale of 2,000. Player skill is reflected in a graph that looks like this. Oh my. All right. Uh, internally, skill is a combination of stats made up of your performance, kills, deaths, captures, round wins, revives, dunks, etc. That ranks you against all the other players in a match. Each player's skill is compared against the skill of the other players in a match. And we make skill adjustments for all players at the end of a match where the two rankings differ. There's also a confidence rating. Oh my. The more games the system has seen you in recently, the more confident the skill adjustment is. In addition to the stats mentioned above, skill encompasses all sorts of things. Your reaction times, agility, how you approach fights, how well you know the map mode, oh, how well you know your character, how you build your character, the weapons, armor, and mods you use, and how you blend all those into a performance with other players. See, I knew that they had, um, uh, like, weapon matchmaking, and yeah, like, the better you build your character, the harder you, yeah. You won't ever actually see a skill value in game, and while we are currently only using it to try and get fairer matches in survival and elimination, we still track it for all modes, including Gambit. Ooh. This gives us a reasonable starting spot in new game types like Rift and Zone Control. Now, how do these skill numbers actually play out in game? Here's a good shorthand we use internally. If someone is 200 skill above you, you can definitely tell they are better than you and they will win 75% uh, of engagements against you. Um, the opposite is true if someone is 200 or more below you. By the time you get to a difference of 400, the better players are going to win 90% of engagements and lower skilled players need to get extremely lucky to pull off a win. Once you get to a difference of 600, there's basically zero chance of a lower skilled player to ever win a 1v1 conflict. Yeah, that's what it's been like lately. Engagement should get fairer the closer you get to the same skill. This is our goal. The problem space. As we started looking at the competitive landscape in Destiny, we noted a few things. Outside of survival and elimination, the ability to influence whether your team wins or loses is usually out of your personal control if you are an average skill or below half the population. Oh my. This can feel bad as the match outcome feels essentially random and you don't feel motivated to try to win. This is contributed to us de-emphasizing winning as a requirement to gain rewards in Crucible. The current landscape also allows brand new players to match up with some of the highest skilled veterans and are expected to compete. On the flip side, if you are highly skilled, you are often put on a team where it feels like you are carrying them and must constantly perform if you want to stand a chance at winning. This doesn't feel good for anyone. Agreed. I totally agree. In control, the skill dis disparities on a team can be stark. Over 50% of the match have a skill disparity of 900 or more between the best and worst players. Jesus. And they said it's a 0% chance at 600. And there's matches right now going on with 900. Yeah, that's pretty fucked up which is so significant that the outcome is already known before the single shot is fired. On the other hand, in freelance survival, 60% of matches have a 250 skill difference or less. This is much more reasonable. These wide variances in skill also lead to more mercy games than you would expect. For example, control. Oh my. Uh, time limit, under 20%. Objective met. Mercy. Match quit. Oh my. Wide disparities in skill also 
the fuck is that word? Fuck off. Other problematic elements. With a, I'm dyslexic and I'm doing a really good job, but I don't know what that word is, so fuck off. Uh, with wide disparities in skill, trapping a single team in a spawn is significantly easier. With wide disparities in skill, it's more likely that most of one team is dead at the same time, freeing the other side up to roam around and look for new targets without having to worry about danger. This is true. Because of these extreme factors, no matter what your skill, it becomes hard to tell if you are improving or not. Was that a great game, or are they just worse players than me? You may quite reasonably look for other stats to demonstrate how good you are. Kills, assists, and deaths, KDA, uh, are great, but it's still unclear how good your opponents are, given that matchmaking is dependent on lots of factors. A KDA in a low population situation can mean a very different thing, skill-wise, than a KDA in a normal or high population scenario. Oh, wow. You can also check third-party sites who track ELO, a ranking system originally designed for chess with broad impact. ELO isn't something we track, use, or validate. So it's a use-at-your-own-risk data point. Oh, okay. If you can't tell if you are improving, it's hard to be motivated to try to improve. We know we have to do something to solve these problems and more. To get Crucible into a better place, we know we won't be able to address everything in one fell swoop in Season 18, but this will be the start of an ongoing process to improve PvP over time. Match balancing. Once we match a group of players into a lobby, assuming we don't have a full fire team, we try to split them up and balance teams. If the player's skills are somewhat random, the system has a tough time. We've tried several different algorithms here to mix the results for the time being. We are hoping that reducing the skill variability in any given lobby will make this easier. SBMM in control. At the start of Season 18, we are going to start tuning match fairness back up in control. And only control uh, in Crucible. Uh, we want to start slowly to limit the number of playlists we consider when tuning matchmaking with hundreds of thousands of people. We can do some testing, but nothing can fully simulate how the full population will be affected by these changes before we ship. We are going to be live tuning the matchmaking perimeters over the first few weeks until we land on something that provides a better balance between fairness, quality, and speed. We will not be touching any other Crucible playlist during Season 18. Trials has no planned changes to its matchmaking, Elimination, Glory will still use the same SBMM they have been using. And everything else will still use connection-based matchmaking they have been using for years. We are currently planning to make further adjustments in Season 19 based around the goals we listed above. But rest assured, any major changes will be communicated in either a TWAB or a blog post as well as patch notes. Or of course you can check my channel and get those updates as well. Connection-based matchmaking. Connection-based matchmaking, CBMM, is what most of the Crucible playlists utilize to find matches that have been best possible connection quality. First, we identify a pool of available players with a good connection to you. Within that pool, we choose players with a very best connection. If we can't find players with that pool, we widen the variance in the connection. We repeat until we find enough players. Then we break them in, out into equally skilled teams. A key point about matchmaking in a fire team, the latency we measure to find a good match does not take into account a fire team with desperate connection speeds. We only measure latency for one of the players in the fire team. So if you are in Tokyo and you are in a fire team with someone in New York and someone else is in uh, Jotunsburg and you are in some laggy crucible matches no matter what lobby you join. That is true. I see that all the time. Skill-based matchmaking. 
Okay, better known as SBMM, skill-based matchmaking uses a similar model to connection-based matchmaking. In ability to latency, SBMM uses skill similarity when asking to join a lobby. Like latency, the acceptable skill similarities expand over time. First, we identify a pool of available players with a good connection to you. Within that pool, we choose players closely matched to your personal skill rating. If we can't find players within that pool, we widen the variance in skill. If that doesn't work, we expand the search again with more variance in connection quality. Once enough players are selected, we break them out into equally skilled teams. Our current glory matchmaking setting prioritizes connection quality and matchmaking speed while still trying to find a fair match. The goal statement for our standard SBMM is we would rather sacrifice some match fairness in order to maintain connection quality and matchmaking speed. Loose SBMM. Our initial version of loose SBMM for control playlist is going to work a little differently. It starts with wider acceptable skill variants and then expands very slowly on both acceptable skill and connection quality at the same time. The goal statement for this new loose SBMM is start with a broad definition of match fairness and compromise on matchmaking speed in order to keep match fairness and connection quality high. We expect overall matchmaking times to go up more so if you and your fire team are on either end of the skill curve, depending on the current population in your region. However, we are hoping the trade-off for matches that aren't super sweaty or lopsided blowouts will be worth it. We have analytics set up to review overall matchmaking data each hour, especially critical over the opening few weeks of the season. And we'll be monitoring and adjusting timings and thresholds above while we try home, home in on our good settings. Control is generally a nice high population playlist, so it will be a good test bed for tuning like this. Uh, what are we going to be looking for as we tune? Amongst other things, we are looking at matchmaking time. Minimize players who cannot find a match in 10 minutes with a goal to keep the average under 2 minutes and under 4 minutes for 95% of the player base. Mercy games. Right now, mercy rates vary based on the map, as low as 5% and as high as 25%. We believe the number of mercy games should be under 5% on all maps, but not actually hit 0 Final score differential. In general, games should be closer in score. Right now, 65% of matches end with one team hitting the score target, 15% going to time, and 15% ending with a mercy. Our goal is that less than 80% of matches end with one team reaching the score target and most of the rest ending with a time limit. We are looking for most matches to have under 10 point difference between the two teams. Wow, a 10 point dip, that would be close matches all the time. I, I, I hope they can pull that off. Less variance between the top players and bottom players. Right now, five to 10% of matches have the best players scoring 30 to 39 more kills than the worst players in the match. And 50% of the matches have the best player getting 20 to 29 more kills. Holy shit. We believe that 90% of matches should have less than 20 kill difference between the best and worst players and 50% should have no more than 10. That I totally agree with that. All of this is great, but there are some things it does not address and that we'll be looking towards in the future seasons. All right. Uh, skill distribution. As we discussed in the skills section, player skill and destiny in most games tend to follow a bell curve centered around skill 100. That means half the players are clustered between negative uh, 100 and 300 skill, and just 1% above 800 or lower than 550. When you do skill-based matchmaking with a skill window, that ends up happening is players at either end of the bell curve have fewer potential players to match against and thus potentially take longer to find matches with good connections this is one reason we will start to with a wider skill threshold and expand more slowly to make sure we go through all available players 
Like we've said, we expect this to cause longer matchmaking times initially, but it's important to note that we are going to be looking at outlier skill thresholds and tuning the experience for them. In future seasons, we are hoping to introduce some technology that allows us to search with a wider skill variance based on your position in the skill curve and keep matchmaking times more consistent with the downside of loosening some match fairness. Uh, fire team size and mismatches. It's no mystery that full fire teams often stomp six solo players who matched against them. Fire teams that are used to playing together may also be in voice chat with each other, allowing them to communicate more effectively than those who are not. Oddly enough, if we look at the average skill for solo players, it fits the bell curve from above clearly if we look at the average skill for a full fire team in control we can see the bell curve centers around 400 to 500 so not only do fire teams have a communication advantage but they also have a decisive skill advantage the big question is are high skilled players more inclined to play in fire teams or do regular fire teams make your skill go up either way we will be implementing a form of fire team size preferred matchmaking in season 19. We will be sharing details about how it works closer to release. Our goal is for it to be utilized like skills, sometimes as a strict requirement, sometimes as a loose one, or sometimes not used at all. Further, it will allow us to eventually replicate and benefit of players in a freelance playlist without having to split the population. That is our current plan going forward. We will keep you updated as we tune settings in season 18 and beyond. Oh my God, that was so long. Woo, man. All right, guys. So um, basically, um, skill-based matchmaking is coming back for the new season. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. A lot of lingo in there, guys. So thank you for uh, sticking around this long and listening to me uh, read all that, guys, for you. Um, if you did stay this long, uh, why not drop uh, your favorite color in the comments so I know that you watched the whole thing to the fucking end because I know some people just skipped around and they didn't hear this part and then I know that they didn't do it. So just comment below your favorite color and I also want to uh, know uh, if you're down for this or not down for this. Are you excited for it or are you not excited for it? Personally, I'm very excited because I'm on the uh, the spectrum of not getting in uh, good matches all the time, but lately... The matches have been a lot more fair so uh, i don't know i'm kind of nervous about this too um you know ask me you know two months ago i would have said yes bring it back but lately i've been having a lot more fun maybe it's because i'm in pc lobbies and i have a you know really nice pc now so anyways guys hit the like button sub button join button and notifications on always love you all and have an amazing day Charlie Wee.